Hey everyone, this is Tiffany with Mahogany and Willow. Jeanette and I wanted to let you know that we've decided to re-release the previous episode on co-parenting. Co-parenting is something that's near and dear to my heart, and I wanted to re-share that during a time when Jeanette and I are both super busy with our own personal lives, and logistically, we just haven't been able to get together to be able to record new content. That being said, we do have new content that we're working on right now and look forward to when we can get that out to you. We really appreciate your support as always, and thank you so much. Have a great day, and I hope you enjoy this episode. Welcome to another episode of Mahogany and Willow. Hi, Tiffany. Hi, Jeanette. How are you? I'm good. Good. I'm good. How are you? Good. Good. I like our topic today, although I have like zero to add. <laughs> Which and you were laughing, but in, in the end, it's actually sad. I know. It, it is. It, well, in a way, but but I, I actually it. have an appreciation, yeah. so so I'm good with it. Yeah. But I, I think it, it it is phenomenal when you find people who can do this particular subject successfully, yeah. because today we're talking about co-parenting. Yes. And, you know, there's there's so many people who go through the breakup of a relationship with a family and you very, very, oh, yeah, dangerous way to live. Yeah, <laughs> yeah exactly. Yeah. Kind of turns out awful. A lot of children wounded, injured and everything. Yeah. And that's why I love this topic. And I love that you get to talk about it because your, your um, life with that has been so different. And I love it. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, and the subject we're tackling today is um, very personal to me in the co-parenting world. Um, people have told my girls' dad, and I'll say his name, he knows I'm talking about him, Chuck. Uh, they've told us for years that we should write a book. <laughs> it's like, you know, and we all, I mean, I just took it for granted, you know, for, for many years that we could parent so well separately. And um, the reason why they would say that is because we actually like each other. You know, we, we have a mutual uh, love for each other and respect for each other. And, um, you know, uh, and to just kind of start this off, we've been apart for 22 years and we have two daughters and, uh, Sydney was only about a year old when we separated. And, you know, I'm not going to sit here and, and blow smoke and say, oh, it's been rainbows and butterflies from day one. You know, there's obviously the initial challenges of, of the whole blow up of the family, the separation of this, the, the moving, the custody, the whatever, and all that is very, very, you know, highly sensitive stuff to deal with. But, you know, within, within the first couple of years, uh, after being apart, you know, it, I didn't give him a choice, so to speak with, you know, this is what we're going to do. And, and I promise you, I'll do whatever I can to always make sure that, that you are the first person I call when something needs to be done or the kids have issues or, you know, if I needed somebody to, to watch the kids on my time, um, he'd be the first one I would call for a while. He didn't live in the area. So that made it really difficult, but I still, um, you know, his mom and I have always remained close. That's my kids, his grandmother, you know, right. um, it was always something always on the, the forefront of my brain that, that family is, is the, the most important thing to these children and the fighting, the, the chaos, the things that happen with other people that we all know and have witnessed, uh, during that breakup, it's, it's devastating to the children. And we, we made a pact years ago that, we'll just do whatever it takes to make sure that they are secure. They know they're loved and that mom and dad have their back and have each other's back from the get go. And it's been such a blessing. We've moved on, you know, both of us remarried. I've more than him, <laughs> which is, you know, a funny subject in itself, but through those times when you move on from that relationship and you start other relationships, for me, I had this package. The package was not only me, but my children. And I would tell people in my life that he's part of the package. It's just an unspoken thing. If you can't handle it, then that's just not going to work out for me because 
that's their dad. He's going to be in our lives. He's going to be around. He's going to, you know, um, be at functions, family functions. Uh, I will always, you know, make sure that he has time with them and that he's available. And that's just the way it is. So um, for the most part, it's not been a problem. And once people get to know him, he's a very likable guy. You know, it wasn't like he was some tyrant that was trying to meddle in my life. That never happened. We never did that to each other. Um, Our children, were our priority. And I love the fact that whenever there would be school functions, things that, that, you know, they wanted their dad and me there, it was always, it was not a a problem. Um, I, I'm grateful for that, but it, it takes both of us to make that work. Now, if you're holding on to resentment and anger, I understand that there are times in people's relationships where it ends badly. I mean, badly, it could be something that is not unforgivable, but you know, some, some aspects of breakups and stuff, you know, there's things that happen that I understand when people have just major resentment, I would hope that they would work through that for the sake of the children, because the kids are not to blame. The kids didn't ask to be brought into a tumultuous, fiery breakup. They didn't ask to be used as a weapon or a tool. They didn't ask to be pulled in different directions. It's not fair to the children. And any advice I'd ever have ever given anyone that is in the midst of a nasty, nasty breakup is, you know, you've got to just put your feelings aside. You've got to focus on what's best for those kids. Because what's going to happen is those children will grow up to be on high alert all the time. They will always overcompensate. They're going to be people pleasers. They're going to have these personality traits that are from that tumultuous time that they witnessed between their parents. And you don't want that, you know, it's not fair. So I always knew that Chuck and I both wanted our kids to be very well centered, and, and never question mom and dad's love for them and then their respect for each other. So um, it's it's been, uh, you know, I can go back in time and think about when people, <laughs> people would be like, You're, you did what? Well, we all, you know, went on vacation and, you know, we went to the Oregon coast last September, all of us, that'd be me, John, the kids, their mates, whatever, and, and Chuck, and, and we had a great time. The guys would go fishing, you know, and over the years, there would be times that maybe I was going somewhere, you know, I used to travel a lot. And on my time to keep the kids in school and in their home, Chuck would be the first one I'd call, Hey, I'm going to be gone such and such for a week. Are you able to come stay at the house and make sure the kids you know, are in a stable environment with their father and not have to farm them out. Oh, absolutely. So he would stay at my current husband's place, whether it was in Nevada or Boise, whatever it was, he'd come and stay and and the kids would be completely at ease with their dad being there. And I was fine with it. And thankfully at the time, that person in my life was fine with it because it was like, this is the first person I would call, you know, to, to have come stay with our children is their father. So, um, it's worked out, you know, we've done birthdays, uh, celebrations. Um, like I said, we've been on more than one vacation. We've, uh, I mean, I could go on and on and he's still close with my parents and, um, I keep in touch with his mom. I mean, it's just a beautiful thing. And I, I would never be the person that a girl or a woman could come to and, and just, lay out all the horrible things the kids' dad did, you know, as far as their, their father, her husband, and he's horrible. He's this, and I'm not going to work with him and make his life hell and constantly in court, all these things. It's like, oh dear God, do you know what you're doing to your children? Do you understand the impact of what it's going to do? These acts right now, this anger, this resentment, what it's going to do to your kids. If people could really realize what that does, I don't think that they would be in that fight. I think they would rethink it. I'm lucky. I'm not saying that this, this type of things for everybody, but I'm, I'm very blessed in that department. And even to this day, you know, the kids are grown. Chuck and I are going to be grandparents for the first time, you know, here any day now. And, um, I'm so blessed. I, I talk to him quite often. I, when I, asked him, you know, I said, I'm going to do this podcast. I'm going to kind of talk about, you know, you and I and in our history and, and you're the kids' dad. And, and, uh, he said, no, that's great. 
you know, we have that um, genuine care for each other. And I love the relationship he has with our girls. You know, that's their dad. And and they have a really good relationship. And, and in some respects, you know, I had the kids for 18 years. And I moved around, you know, there's no doubt. I moved to Nevada and they finished high school in Nevada. But uh, he's had them because I'm still in Nevada and he's had them since they moved back after graduation for the last, I don't know, several years. And he gets to spend more time with them now than I do. And it's, it's kind of a beautiful trade-off in a way he gets at least a couple times a week, they get together, they do dinners and stuff. If I'm around and they'll invite me and they'll invite John, it's, it's just a really beautiful thing. So my advice to people would, would really be put your feelings aside I understand completely because I lived it through John, a horrible, nasty, awful situation. And it still goes on to this day, eight years later. I've, I've seen in other people as well that I'm, that I'm close to. And if a person can just put your own personal feelings and hurt and resentment aside and focus on those babies, you'll never regret it because then, then you can have that nice feeling where your kids see that you had their back. They compliment you. They, they are constantly bragging about Chuck and I to other people. I love that because we did that for them and they're very, very secure in their situation and, and their feelings about us and their own personal lives and the tools that gave them for their future relationships. I'm proud as hell of it. So I'm, my hope today is, is just, um, if you can put those personal feelings aside and keep your children as a priority, you'll never regret it. That's beautiful. Thank you. Yeah. I'm sure, I'm sure it's not easy and I'm sure it takes some conscious decision making yes. from the very beginning. So at the at the beginning when you guys were splitting up, was there I mean, what kind of challenges were there or do you remember conscious decisions that you were having to kind of um maybe maybe conscious decisions you were having to make while you were having to put your feelings aside or was the breakup pretty mellow? I mean, did it start from the beginning? I knew from day 1 that I was hoping, it was a hopeful, constant thought in my head that, okay, this is how I want this to go. But I'm, I'm, I'm one half of the equation, right? right. So I can't, I couldn't control anything. Uh, it, it made it more difficult because he was traveling a lot and then he ended up moving. So that was really difficult. And then the times that he didn't make it because, you know, Seattle's how many hours away and, and there was times that he didn't make it for his visitation. That used to irritate me like crazy. I'm like, well, this isn't your mom's visitation. This is your visitation, you know? So we had a little bit of angst and I, I think the, the whole breakup thing was, it was fairly mutual, but I know there was hurt feelings in there as well, because, you know, the first thing most people say is, well, there's somebody else. I'm like, no, there's not. It's just a matter of we just, this is, you know, it's just one of those things. It's not working. Neither were happy. Neither of us were happy. It wasn't like a devastating thing. So um, it was just the, the time it takes to adapt and really absorb what's happening. The blow up of a family's never a good thing. It was hard as hell for me. I all of a sudden had to move back to mom and dad's and I had, you know, I hadn't worked full time for four years and uh, was all of a sudden thrown into having to get a full time job, put the kids in daycare. They were sick all the time, you know, and, and I was uh, really needing that backup then and it wasn't there. And, um, everybody else was working. And so I didn't have the backup that I was really, really needing. And it caused some issues, no doubt. Absolutely. Um, I, I definitely made my opinions known about certain things. And, and as time went on, um, he got closer and closer distance wise, pretty soon he's back here. And then <laughs> we went through a bump uh, several years later when, uh, you know, I'd been in Boise, he was in the area. It was perfect. It worked great. Everything was great. He would come stay at the house and all of a sudden, you know, I go through a divorce and, and then all of a sudden, you know, I'm dating somebody long distance for several months and we decide to move. Well, then all hell breaks loose in that moment. And I understand completely, but I did whatever it took to make it easy. I'll meet you halfway. 
I'll lower your responsibility here. I'll make it work. I'll do whatever it takes. I don't want to take away from you, but this is the point I'm at now. This is where we're going. And my willingness to bend over backwards, I was totally okay with it. And it made it easier for him to agree to certain things. And he came down a lot and we had, you know, we were fine after that, but it was a bump. It was a big bump. Um, but we got through it because I did what it took. I wasn't going to fight and say, you know, well, I'm taking your kids. Cause he's like, I finally made it back here. And now you're leaving with the kids. I'm like, well, it took you long enough to get here. You know? <laughs> <laughs> and yes, I'm leaving and this is what we're doing. But I obviously talked to him at, at length about it and he got, he got better with it. Cause I made whatever I needed to do. I was there. I, we halfway. I drove like clockwork for a long time. And then pretty soon Riley was old enough to where she could drive and meet him. And then he'd follow her. And then she got old enough again to drive the whole way from Winnemucca to here. Right. So, you know, it was a process. And again, being willing to do whatever it takes to smooth that bump out, that's, that's what you have to do. And I was grateful that he was, you know, he understood and he said, okay, I'm fine with this. And that's just what you do. You, you make things work, you know, Absolutely. and I think people's egos and people's, um, you know, anger and all that gets in the way and clouds that what's, what's really the most important are those kids. And the constant, I, I'm glad that you said that there were some bumps. I'm glad yeah. that you said that there were things that needed to be worked out. It wasn't like at the beginning, it just fell into place. We were perfect co-parents and we went about our business. Right. Um, it's kind of nice to know, not in the sense that you had problems. Right. No, I know. <laughs> <That's rude>. No, <laughs> It's nice to know that there's um, movement there. Yeah. And and like you said, just the just the desire for people to... To yes, you're going to hit the bumps and just work the bumps out to the best of your ability. And nothing's perfect. It wasn't perfect when he was gone and it wasn't perfect when you moved away. Yeah. It wasn't perfect. It was the workability that you created that, that ended up with the result that you got, which right. I absolutely love. I think that's perfect. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. yeah. It's, it's been, it's been a wonderful journey. And again, like I said, I genuinely care for him. Right. I, um, if anything happened to him, it would be devastating, you know, of course for my kids, but for, for my family, you know, I mean, that's a, a unit and cause I've, I've known him for so long and, and we have two beautiful kids together and, you know, we, we are just totally focused on the kids' happiness, well being. And now with the grandbaby coming, you know, it's just, I know it's just amazing. And it's yeah. a, again, a new season in our lives True. and so much to be grateful for, you know, um, he's, he's a, a hard worker, a good person. He's, you know, he would drop anything to be there for the kids. I know it. And I, and I never doubted that, you know, um, well, when he wasn't physically here, obviously that was a problem, but, but f forever and ever since then, I have no doubt. And, and that is that is a beautiful thing for absolutely. my kids, Oh, absolutely! you know, cause it's, it's hard for them having that, that consistent father figure in their lives to find a guy that's going to live up to those standards. The same as my dad, you know, for me when come, you know, trying to find that, you know, similar kind of guy. And I'm glad they have that. Cause I have, I'm a daddy's girl, you know, complete utter daddy's girl and they have a wonderful relationship with him. And I'm grateful for that because that's the last thing, like we talked before, I was raised in a household with mom and dad that had been together since the dawn of time. And, you know, in the same house I grew up with boring, right? I mean, right. it's beautiful, but it's like, you know, nothing like you and I went through the, right. the changes and stuff. So I hated, and I think that's probably more than anything that motivated me to be that consistent, you know, we will work through anything to keep you guys feeling as secure and stable in this life as possible. Even though you bounce around, things change, move this, whatever, they have us to fall back on. We are their foundation. And that was super important to me because of how I was raised. I hated that that they were a product of, you know, a divorce situation. The statistics are just through the ceiling. And I hated that for so long. I battled with that, but I wasn't going to stay in a relationship that I knew wasn't right for 
either of us, you right. know, because I wanted my kids to have a loving, you know, nurturing atmosphere, whether it was us together or apart. And, and we've successfully done that. And that was super important to me. So yes, I never had to go through that, but we made it as, as, as comfortable, if you want to call it that as possible to where they didn't really feel like they missed out <laughs> on having their mom and dad consistently because we, we've we worked through it and, and done a lot of things together for so long. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. I'm hoping, I'm hoping that people who hear that will have hope. Yeah. If they're in the middle of the disillusion. Yeah. You know, yeah. The, if it's dissolving now currently and maybe you're still in that angst, yeah. maybe you're still in that that flow, even when they're in that moment, they can start making those conscious decisions about, wait, what's best for my family and being Definitely. being able to let go of the anger and resentment. Yeah, yes. I think that's lovely. Well, and it, it doesn't end because if you constantly keep that at the surface, you've got to deal with that person all the time. Right. And if you never, if you can never work through it, then how is that going to affect you know, it affects everybody, right. not just the kids, everybody around you. You're like, oh God, here they go. You know, they're at it again or whatever. And it, again, it just, it affects everyone. And I'm very fortunate. And I have a few, if you don't mind me going through no, a couple go things that I wrote down, just, I mean, cause my story is one thing. It's another to kind of put it into bullet points about what, you know, I think would be best for people to try to do. Um, and of course what we did doesn't work for everybody, but, um, uh, again, put the kids needs first needs and wants before your anger and resentment. And it is possible to put old wounds and feelings aside, um, make a parenting plan, which is very important. I, um, my plan was always in my head. It wasn't something I actually wrote down, but in the initial stages of the blow up, I call it the blow up because it is like blowing up a family, you know, the Absolutely. dream is gone. Everything's gone down the toilet it's blown up, but, but sit down with your soon to be, if you can, even if you have a third party there, a mediator, we had to do mediation when I was leaving, you know, that was fine. Whatever it took to just, you know, have somebody sit there and kind of go, okay, we're running interference. She said this, you said this, what do you guys think together? And, and present the plan back and forth. And that was, that was great because having that third party there was, a, was that neutral person trying to point out the good, the bad, the ugly for both of us. And it really was helpful. So I suggest getting a mediator involved if you absolutely cannot sit down and make out a parenting plan together. Um, keep the conversation alive regarding your willingness to always work together and keep them, obviously keep the kids first. Um, it's more difficult to fight than it is to get along. It's true. <laughs> you know, really. Um, don't invite the government into your house. I don't know how many times I can say that to people. And I've said it. That's one of Dr. Phil's biggest things when it comes to custodies. Do not invite the government into your house. And what that means is any legal action that you take, any dirty laundry, any nasty, nasty, and the government gets involved, meaning, you know, lawyers and the state and the state gets involved with your parenting back and forth. They're always going to be there. And once that happens, it can be the most horrible situation that you could have ever done. And you did that. And things that, things that can get said, once it's said, accusations, things that aren't accurate, that are lies, we'll just say, it's, it, once it's out there, it's out there. And then you can label somebody just out of being pissed off spiteful, yeah. and spiteful. You can label that person and it's forever there. And again, why, 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 why? Because the kids are the ones that suffer. So do not let the government, in. yeah. Um, be willing to always pay your way. Take care of your responsibilities. They're half yours. Take care of it. It is what it is. Uh, when, when, you know, the government gets involved, they're going to slap so much on you and so much on you. You take it and you do whatever. I hadn't worked for four years, four years, you know, I hadn't worked a full-time job. And all of a sudden I'm like, ah, but I, no matter what, I still had an allotment of debt on my side, even though I hadn't worked. And I'm like, okay, I'll take it. <laughs> now what, you know, right. but it is what it is. I helped accumulate this stuff and I have to help take care of it. Be willing to just do it. You just got to do it. So right. 
um, and celebrate things together. Be there, be present. There's that word, the P word that we use a lot. Be present, be present, be present in your kids' lives. And if you cannot sit together, nobody expects you to be buddies. I have no problem sitting with Chuck, no matter where we are, but it's not always the case. So be present, put your things aside. Like, you know, we've got weddings coming up. John's boys are engaged. We have weddings coming up. One of my anxiety kind of feelings is being in the same room with certain people, right. not because of me, but because of ill will feelings about things um, still to this day with grown children. And that is not fair, not fair to the kids. So that's going to be the one thing that they have to think about is how do I, how do I keep that over there and that over there? And it's not fair because that's their moment, their day, their time, their celebration. It should be about them. So again, I can't say that enough. Um, again, again, be at sporting events, do what you need to do to be present. Always keep in touch. Tell the other parent, the game's here. Here's the schedule for this. Do whatever it takes. I did that religiously and I, I'm a planner. So my calendar would go out for months and I'd say, this is what's going on. This is what's what. So if you can be here, be here, you know, right. you can stay with us, you can do whatever. And that's always left the door open for that. And, and it worked beautifully. Nice. Um, and then I already mentioned, give the, fir- the parent, the other parent, the first right of refusal, you know, um, can you take them on this night? You don't have to go through a rigid schedule. I mean, the, well, that's what the court says. I don't care what the court says. I don't care what they, this plan says that I have this holiday, this holiday. If you want to be flexible, I'm flexible. Let's do this. I can't, you know, can we swap weekends? Can you take this week? I want to do vacation here, but it overlaps on your time. Can we be flexible? Absolutely. And that was never an issue, never an issue. But boy, I hear things about other people Mm -hmm. that this person is completely rigid and will not be flexible. And again, it only hurts the child. You might get your satisfaction off of playing that. It hurts the child. And, and again, I, I can't. I can't reiterate that enough. So, um, but anyway, just remember that your kids will remember this and, and take this in from little on up. And you want them to be very, very well centered in their own being, knowing you were always there for them. Both of you. True. Yeah. You have to remember in the end, the kids will thank you for it and grow into secure young adults. So they'll remember how you both worked together and the word together is huge. Absolutely. Definitely huge. And we want to create a respectful, secure world for them to grow up in. And they'll remember it forever. I'm just going to keep saying that over and over. They remember these things. So I, and it becomes their life. It, it becomes does. their new relationships. It does. And, and we want them to be good, happy, secure adults. Yeah. So I really appreciate um, Chuck being able to let me speak about him and, um, but that's just the relationship we have. So thanks Chuck. And thank you all for listening to this episode where I'm bragging about my awesome situation. And I really hope that, that somebody out there takes this and realizes that, you know what? She's right. It's possible. You know, it is possible. So right. that's all I care about is that we can show other people out there that that you can make this work and, and create a really loving environment for your children to grow up in, even if you're not together. Right. Yeah. I agree. Yeah. It'd be a lovely thing. Yeah. I want to put out there too, Jeanette, that if any of our listeners have any of their own personal stories, whether it's a victory or it's a challenge or whatever it is, uh, we'd love to hear from them. So feel free, guys, to send us a message via Facebook Messenger, Instagram, uh, or any other platform that you feel like doing. And and, um, we'll keep it private, of course. And if we can, you know, uh, help with advice or, or just I want to hear your victories or whatever it is, you know. Please feel free to share. Yeah. Well, thanks, Jeanette. I appreciate you uh, letting me take the wheel on this one. Absolutely. (laughs) All right. Well, thank you guys for joining us again for another episode of Mahogany and Willow. Because there's always something important to talk about.